Is Sean Payton overrated? That's the question that we got from our friend UGA Bronco. Uh, and that's the question we're going to be hitting first in this week's Die Hard Mailbag. Uh, he says, is there any chance we're giving Sean Payton too much faith and credit in his coaching career? I mean, in the 15 years that he had a top 15 quarterback on his team, he made one Super Bowl. And he only won that Super Bowl because PFM... Peyton effing Manning made a bad mistake. Uh, he didn't win that Super Bowl. The Colts lost it. But even if we aren't focusing on the 2009 Super Bowl with Drew Brees, he only made one Super Bowl and had three losing seasons. It's not like the NFC was absolutely loaded at that time. You can't use the excuse that you were in the same conference as Tom Brady. Let's give Sean Payton credit. His turnaround, the Saints was impressive, but there were a lot of years where the Saints were just kind of mid. I'm just a little concerned about us giving complete control to a guy that I feel is a little overrated. What say y'all? Uh, I think that's strong words. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I definitely don't think he's overrated. And I think if you look at back at any Super Bowl or any season, mm -hmm. it's one or two plays where you say somebody messed up or you say somebody took advantage of their mistake. Yep. So uh, I think they won that Super Bowl. Uh, and I feel like, you know, Sean Payton deser deserves credit for it. And I think he's proven over the years, I mean, top five offense many years while he was a head coach. That was our problem um, here in, in Denver. And I think he's coming to fix it. So. We should give him credit, and I don't think he's overrated, and I think we have to wait and let him finish his job. 100%. Um, yeah, like you said, like it, it all comes down to one or two plays, and the fact that you know Peyton threw an interception, and that's what lost the game. That's how football works. Yep. It's like you go through every Super Bowl, and there's probably an interception or something that you look at and say, oh, that team lost it. Um, that's just the nature of the game. You also threw in there, you know, the is it the Minneapolis miracle? That's the the deep ball Stephon Diggs right up the sideline mm -hmm. that sent the Vikings the conference championship game Sean Payton thought that they were going to at least make the Super Bowl that year he's a little biased but uh that at least would have given them a chance to go play in a game to get there yeah. um, so there are seasons like that I also think it's important to remember the Saints are not a proud organization it's a little bit different when you're coming to Denver where the expectations are so high. Um, it, it reminds me of that the postseason press conference um, this year when Sean said, "You, this is not what this room would look like after the season we just had if we've had this season in New Orleans. Yeah. And he's talking about there being 50 media members there. And he's like, yeah, there'd be like six or seven people who are interested in covering this because it's just a different world. You know, this is a, this is a football town. It's a franchise with a whole bunch of fans. And for that reason, it's a lot easier to build. Um, it's important to remember, you know, Archie Manning, Saints quarterback, you know, kind of like their legendary Saints quarterback um, up until the time that Drew Brees got there. He played 10 years for the Saints. Guess how many times he made the playoffs? Twice. Zero. He never made the playoffs. They That, that was a franchise that just never got there. In the 13 years before Sean Payton took over, they made the playoffs once. In his first year there, they made it to the conference championship. And so while, yes, there are some missed playoffs. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, six times they missed the playoffs. Seven, I guess, if you count the last year. But I guess six if you don't count the year he was suspended. That kind of comes with the territory. Um, you don't... It, it, it wasn't a Patriots-like run uh -huh. with Belichick and Tom Brady. But... It's a good run. Nobody, nobody has Patriots type runs like that's that standard is just too high. Yeah. Um, so that's that's kind of what I think. Um, he finishes up by saying, "Also, I heavily am repping Brock Bowers for the twelfth pick. I've watched this dude for three years, absolutely dominate, and he's going to be so much fun in the NFL." And that's actually some of the question that we're going to hit next uh, after we put three oh three on the clock here. All right. Uh, this one comes in from the Danimal who says, I want to go ahead and start the Brock Bowers or bus train. Stop staring at other teams, sloppy seconds and the fourth best quarterback in the draft and build a team that really is a quarterback away from being dangerous. If we really trust Peyton, then trust him to go get the most out of our young quarterback room while we go through this silent rebuild. What say you? We ready to ride this train? Danimal. I think that's a good idea. I think that we've talked about it a few times here on the show and uh, we're for it. You know, we think it makes sense, and we think mm -hmm. that Brock Bowers could really be an added bonus in that transition. So I'm all for, um, you know, if we're not picking up Penix in the second round, then, you know, might as well just go ahead and go on to that. Although, J.J. McCarthy is looking like the best quarterback in yeah. the last five years, the way everybody's talking about him. So <laughs> interested to see how that's going to play out, but I definitely do think it's time for us to rebuild just a little bit um, and then go get the right quarterback at the right time. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that's probably the smart way to approach it. I do think, though, that 
a good quarterback can uh, solve a lot of your problems. Yep. And if you wind up hitting on, you know, the next CJ Stroud, for example, he can elevate your football program super quickly. And then all of a sudden, these holes that you're seeing don't feel quite as big. Um, so if, if you can go get a guy like, uh, like a J.J. McCarthy, or honestly, as much as I'm not a Drake May fan, all the McCarthy buzz means that Drake May might be there to trade up for it. The mm-hmm. ninth pick, the tenth pick. I'm kind of getting suckered back around into that one. Um, still, Brock Bowers is not a bad move in any way. Although, I've said this before. It gives me old Jerry Judy vibe. You know, feels too good to be true. We're sitting here saying, like, wait, could Brock Bowers really be there at that point? Does it just blow up in your face because you're buying the hype and buying the brand and not necessarily paying attention? But that's not something you can worry too much about. Brock Bowers is a great player. Um Final question here. Cody Cheppa jumping in saying, my boys, are there any late round receivers you'd like to take or go for as undrafted free agents? Why not Xavier Weaver, the Colorado Buffalo? Keep him in Colorado. I mean, Luke McCaffrey is my guy. He's uh-huh. becoming like everybody's guy, though. And it's mostly because of the McCaffrey name. And I guess if I'm being honest, that's probably half the reason I like him, too. Yeah. But, I mean, it's a Colorado family. Keep him in Colorado. If he's still there, I mean, there, there's so many things that you can point to. I mean, the, the fact that he went from quarterback to receiver and quickly looked like he was up to the task. I mean, the, the fact that his mom says that he was the best athlete of the three boys. Fastest. Uh, he ran the fastest 40. Faster 40 time than Christian <laughs> McCaffrey. Like, there's all these things you can kind of point to. And when the big hole for the Broncos, I think, in their receiver room is at slot receiver. Mm-hmm. He's a pretty good slot receiver. He's somebody who could just jump right in that role. And because of the way you've built this room out, you're not relying on him too much. You know, Marvin Mims can be kind of the sle- speed slot. Uh, Tim Patrick can be kind of like your big slot receiver. But Luke McCaffrey is just that true slot. It's really tempting to me. Yeah, I think brothers usually play well um, yeah. in the in the NFL. Yeah. You know, not so much in the NBA. Because, you know, Giannis and his <laughs> brothers got that whole yeah. situation going on. But <laughs> <laughs> nevertheless, I feel like in the NFL, like, usually brothers, if one brother's good, the other brother's usually pretty solid. So, yep. I don't know. Let's take a shot. I'll also I'm, give I'm a shout out to my guy, Brendan Rice. Um, pro- maybe not a late round guy. It seems like the buzz is kind of getting him up there. But when you turn on the Caleb Williams tape, he's out there making just about every catch. And yeah. he's just big body boxing guys out. He's plenty fast enough. Um, I would love to see him in uh, in a Broncos uniform which we don't even know what that looks like. Not yet. Going to figure that out soon. All right. Thanks for listening. You guys can drop your questions in the post for this at thedmvr.com. All of our diehards can leave questions for us to answer next Monday. We'll see you guys then.